whole scenario that's just hunting me down. And so that's why I figured I'd bring it up. I, I, I see the practicality being used again and again. So I, part, of your, part of your job as designing this, though, is pushing back when people come up with unrealistic requirements. Like if someone came up to you and said, I want to create this web page that plays this MIDI file when it loads and has an animation of a goat dancing across the bottom of the screen and went, you know, went on and on and on about these ridiculous design elements. Part of your job as a web designer is to say, you know what? Yeah, yeah that's kind of cool. That's cute. But is that really what you want to do to portray your company? Is that really, does that really advance the goals? Are people going to visit your site just to watch the goat dance across the screen and hear a cheesy MIDI file? So part of your job is you bring the expertise to push back. So if someone says, I want these 18 links on my mobile page, say, that's not how mobile web pages look. All right? That's not how uh, pages that are optimized for mobile, for mobile behave. All right? That um, the whole idea of mobile is simplicity, and therefore by putting this in, you know, you're kind of defeating <coughs> the purpose, and you're going to make a mobile site that's virtually <coughs> unusable. So I think it's valid, you know, um, people say that the customer is always right, and I suppose that there may be a point in your life where the customer doesn't blink, says, I don't care what you say, it has to have these, these links, in which case, you know, you're on your own, good luck. But I think a lot of customers are very reasonable people. If you explain to them why it's a better way to have it designed and organized another way, most of them will say, oh, well, they just need to be able to get to these 18 links. They don't all have to be on the first one. Or something along those lines, you know. So I think it's perfectly valid to push back and to say something along those lines. Go ahead. I mean, how important would it be even to have buds if you were looking for that kind of depth and, and information? Like, I think what she was intimating was you just go down, you know, your thumb's going scrolling down like this. There's a block for each item that you want to have on the front page, which is the, Four the general ones, thing, yeah. and then you hit that, brings up another layer, and you'd scroll up or down, find what you want, and hit that, and then you're done. So instead of using a menu, so you're you, talking, you, your whole thing would be in just blocks. So you're talking about going using one simple menu to hop to a completely separate page with another simple menu? Well, yeah, I was thinking of like uh, USA Today, you know, I mean, USA Today has that menu on top, but you're generally going to, you know, you've got sports, you've got world news, you've got international news. Or, even if you wanted to, to have something where, like this, and maybe this is what people are alluding to, but I'm not catching it exactly. Oh, right now, I, I have one, two, three, and four. Yeah. If each one of those had three sub-menu listings, and let's say that's, we just call it at that, each one has three sub, to list the main and its little subs, you'd, you'd have a column of literally 16 items. You could have 16, yeah. And so that's what a lot of people are just... No, he's not saying to have 16 items. He's, having, he's saying have four items. That when you click on, you go to four more, or... Oh no! But that's what I'm, I'm what I'm what I'm seeing is that. Mikey, you use on all sixteen. Don't you go like Repeat that, please. Sir, I, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, you use it a lot. You, I see you using it. Don't yeah. you go like this a lot? You you always scrolling with your thumb going up and down. See, I don't use it enough to say. I, guess I, don't, I don't think about it. I probably do. Yeah. So um, that's, you know, that's almost a menu in itself if you look at it like that. Here's my view of what would be a perfect navigation for this. I hesitate to use the word perfect, but a good navigation for this. You have your four main things. Main one, main two, main three, and main four. You click on main one and you get main one, sub one one, sub one, two, sub, one, three, sub, one, four. Then main two, main three, and main four, which might be off the screen. 
you click on this one, and again, it expands underneath that. I don't know if you can do that all uh, CSS, because the CSS thing, it requires like the hover to do that. So you'd have to hover with that and bring that up. You might be able to, and then as you hovered on that, bring that one up. I guess what I'm suggesting here is sort of a JavaScript-based solution, that you would have these things. Now, do you think it would be valid for us to try to do this in class here? Yes. All right. So let's go to do this. Let's try it first, all CSS. Okay? Then we will go and try it. Um, with JavaScript. If we can't do it with CSS, we'll try it with JavaScript. If we can't do it with CSS, we can try JavaScript. So let's try to do this kind of scheme. If that worked, would you say that that's a reasonable scheme? Oh, I see that approach a lot. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, let's go in here. Our first thing to do is So I'm going to try making each list and each list item 100%. So we have that, 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 and that. All right. Block versus inline, where it'll put them in a list. Yes. The question is where my submenus go. Because I broke that. something up with the sub menus. Pardon me? I'm sorry, I like this menu. It looks good.
I'm going to re-download your original in case I screwed up something. Have the original because I downloaded this app. miss this. I, I missed that whole last half of that style sheet. There's just there's a lot of stuff in there that's wreaking havoc with the position of it. Um, so it seems like getting rid of that makes it work a lot better. All right, then then we have.
Yeah, you had your hand up? If you want to finish your thought, I was just... I, I'm not, my thought's gone. <laughs> I ruined it, didn't no, 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 no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pin that one on you. It's all right. If you wouldn't mind, could you post that so I can see? Um, this is David's code, so if David doesn't mind. But no, I'm, okay. all, I'm, I'm here to learn any way I can. Yeah. You yeah. guys want to... Yeah. Can you explain what you yeah. did? Can I explain what I did? Or at least yeah. maybe not how you fixed it, but why it works now. <laughs> okay. Why it works now is there was a lot of stuff interfering with the way that things were positioned. So in other words, let, let's, let's think about this. Let's, let's look at the code. Let's examine the code. And I, I may not literally get exactly what your code is, but I, I think I have the gist of it. All right. Let's imagine. Let's imagine our HTML code looks like this. I have an unordered list. It has A, B, C, and then there's a submenu under C. Okay, so underneath that, there's another unordered list that has C1, C2, C3. Okay, if I didn't do anything style-wise, what would this look like? This will look like this. A, B, C, C1, C2, C3. Right? Because ULs are block tags, right? LIs are block tags. So they're going to stack right on top of each other real nice. All right? So, what did I do? What I did. Or what, what does that code do? What that code does is it makes this initially have a display of none. Which means that if there's a D underneath it and an E and an F, then with a display of none, it doesn't take up any space. So it goes D, E, F like this. Okay? So with the first part of the style in, we made all those things have a display of none. All right? I put my cursor on this guy, and what happens is I have in there something that says, you know, a, U, a, a UL in the nav, hover, pardon me? I'm thinking to myself, that's what I was trying to, right. like, when I said earlier, right. and you said that's what he's doing, I'm like, I didn't say anything, but I was like, that can't be what he's doing. Right. Make sense to me. Yeah. Because this is what makes sense to me. What it does is, and you put the hover, what it's saying is make any of the children ULs, or make the child UL underneath it, visible. So what it will do is it will change the display from none to black. So we'll see C1, C2, C3. I'm no longer hovering over that, and boom, it goes away. Probably seen that. So, the problem that we were going in, uh, the problem that you were running in, into, was the fact that there was a lot of other code to do the positioning. Now, I probably royally have screwed up the code for the desktop version. All right? So, in other words, the code that was in there for, the, for uh, the, the base version, you probably need to move a lot of that code into the full version to do the, where you did the positioning and you, you put the, the, the drop down so it appears nice like drop downs. All right, so that's probably all you need to do to go and do that. Um, this is a case of, I, I think, you know, what, what are the bigger lessons to be learned here? All right, the one thing is you do have the ability to uh, put hover events on things via CSS, so you can do this all CSS and no JavaScript. That's something that might might be news to, to some of you. You can actually control children underneath something, as we saw in the hover event. We'll, we'll look at that CSS code in a minute. Um, the one lesson I tried, uh, I, I want to get is definitely think in a design that will work for mobile 
as opposed to thinking of how to make a desktop kind of design work in a mobile environment. All right? Think of what is best in a mobile situation. Envision what you'd like to see and go and do that. Then keep the tool simple. All right? Keep the tool simple. In other words, in this case, the simple style sheet would have just had a, would just have a bit in it. We could probably trim out a lot of what's in the CSS. Well, I did. I trimmed a lot out of the CSS, and that actually pulled it uh, and got it to work in the way that we expected. So, I mean, this is an awesome thing to go and look at these resources. So I definitely encourage you all to do that. Um, knowing, again, keeping those things in mind that, that we described. All right? Questions? What if you're going to do something like this via JavaScript? How could we do that? I would, I would tend to think that if someone had a concern about hover issues, that even the mobile device, I would go with kind of that on-click feature <coughs> trigger. OK. I, I mean, we haven't tested yours in, in the emulator to see but sure. If, if, assuming hover was a no go, that would be my first. It's not just no go. It's just it's going to be awkward. All right. It's going to be awkward to if you think about, you know, for three levels of drop down, putting your mouse over this and then going over and down, over and down is going to be awkward. You following what I'm saying? Oh yeah. I, like I said, uh, my personal experience with some other ones very similar to this is that. On the mobile platforms, I've seen where obviously you can't hover with your finger, but when I pushed it, those sub ones do right. pop up and appear. So I mean, hover must must somehow translate given the similarity with other CSS dropdowns. And you know for a fact that that's not done with JavaScript. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll go home and check them out and bring them back again. For share and dissect. Uh, so, uh, but I, I guess I could have sorted to it right here in a second. Okay. So if we were going to do this via JavaScript, let me just, let me take, this. Let me get rid of all the CSS. And what I'll do is something like this. I can put... Are we supposed to be able to see this? No, you're supposed to guess it. today. Okay. So I'm going to say on click. We could do this any number of ways, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a JavaScript function called toggle menu. All right. And I'm going to pass it um, the word one. Now, what does the word one represent in that? It's going to represent the ID of this guy. Do you have to have the single quotes around one up in the, the Java strips? Yes. Right? I'm 
just using the ID being the level of the menu it is. This is Okay, yeah, this is submenu, this is menu, um, this is menu two, actually. This should actually be two, three. So, we'll go up here and make a little dummy style, not to do everything here, but... a second to type this in and then we'll, we'll review what it does. Let me make sure it works too. No, this I removed all the CSS because CSS is not working. Um, let's see. I'll go to G developers or tools, developers, JavaScript Council, and it'll tell me redisplay is not defined, toggle menu is not defined. So I'm 0 for 2. Toggle menu. 